Art Block is a show where we discuss various creative mediums and how they are made. So, early applications are done and portfolio deadlines are in a few months. I've had a few friends of mine who have been scrambling to get their portfolios ready for college, and as someone who's compiling a portfolio myself, I figured I would put together a video to help anyone who's trying to get into an art-based college or applying for a job that involves art. A portfolio is generally 10 to 20 pieces of art in various mediums that essentially show off what you can do. It's a great way for schools and employers to see what you're capable of, as well as how much you've grown as an artist. There's also something called an AP portfolio, but we'll get to that later. In a portfolio, you'll generally want to have a little bit of everything. I've compiled two checklists, one with 10 pieces and one with 20 pieces to hopefully help you guys along the way. In a 10 piece portfolio, you're going to want to have at least three sketchbook pieces, two landscape pictures, two examples from life, two concentration pieces, and one big collective piece. On the other hand, a 20 piece portfolio should have at least five sketchbook pieces, three landscape pictures, three examples from life, four concentration pieces, two experimental pieces, two proficiency pieces, and one big collective piece. But spirit, I don't know what these mean. What in the world is a concentration piece? Don't worry guys, I'm getting there. A sketchbook piece is just that, a picture you've taken from your sketchbook. These can be anything from pose practice to thumbnail roughs to rough sketches in general. The purpose of the sketchbook piece is to show your process to whoever is looking at your art. Colleges and employers don't always want to see a bunch of polished pieces, they want to see how you got to your final product. Landscape pictures are somewhat straightforward. If you've ever watched Bob Ross, he tends to do a lot of landscape paintings. Landscape pictures are a great way of conveying your understanding of depth and composition. Landscapes generally have a lot of detail in them and a lot of colors, so this is a great test to see how you mix colors as well as working with your medium when it comes to detail. Landscapes technically aren't required, you can sometimes interchange them with character design or concept art, but it is a good skill to have nonetheless. Examples from life is probably the most necessary skill for you as an artist and something that portfolio reviews are always looking for. You're showing that you are capable of translating life to art, and it's where a lot of artists learned how the essentials of lighting, shadow, and color mixing come to be. Of course, it doesn't really matter what you're drawing as long as you're drawing from life, but I would recommend challenging yourself to try a few new things with this one. Concentrations are probably the hardest to get right. If you've ever taken an AP art course, you'll do a project that is called a concentration project, which is essentially about 12 pieces that revolve around a singular concept. The reason why this is so hard is because I've found doing 12 pieces of the exact same thing are difficult to say the least. I've noticed a lot of people go with a storybook format for this one, but I've also seen someone individually watercolor a 12 frame animation cycle and then scan them in, so this one's less about polish and more about consistency. A collective piece is a big piece that's supposed to show you firing on all cylinders. Super high detail, shading, you name it. This one's a bit tricky because of just how time consuming it is, but if you start doing it a few months before your deadline and work on it a little bit at a time, it will be a lot easier to complete in the long run. There's also two particular types of pieces that are listed in the 20 piece portfolio that aren't in the 10 piece. These are of course experimental and proficiency pieces and are kind of like icing on the cake for a portfolio. An experimental piece is a piece where you intentionally go outside of your comfort zone and challenge yourself. I mentioned how a lot of artists will generally have something they're more proficient in as others and it usually comes with a lot of preference on what they like to draw. The purpose of the experimental piece is to try something that you're either not necessarily the best at or go completely out of the realm of normal and try something completely bizarre. The proficiency piece, on the other hand, is less of a complete opposite to the experimental piece, but rather the other side of the same coin. While an experimental piece is made for the sake of breaking you out of your bubble, the proficiency piece is made to show what you can do when you're in your comfort zone. Generally proficiency pieces are a lot more relaxed than a concentration or a collective piece. It's a lot more personal and gives whoever's looking at your art an idea of who you are as the artist. So now that you know what to include, it's time to start planning for deadlines. A lot of the upper tier schools will generally require application portfolios to be submitted by November 1st. Sorry for being late, but I was trying to make said deadline myself. Fear not, there is also the general application, which generally starts after the early deadline and goes till around the beginning of January. As of this video being recorded, it is November, which gives you about two months to make a general application deadline. Let's just say that you have approximately six weeks to get the art ready, just to be safe. Going with the 10 piece portfolio, that's 10 divided by six or five divided by three, which is just about two pieces of art a week. Doesn't seem like a lot at first, but trust me, it builds up. You're going to want to start off by planning and maybe even preparing your collective piece. 
Over the next six weeks, you're going to want to chip away at this piece until it's finished and ready to be submitted. Just sitting down and working on it for a couple of hours every few days is a lot better than trying to get it done in one go. Trust me, I know. Through the next four weeks, you're going to want to complete at least one of your concentrations or one of your examples from life once a week. Depending on the theme of your concentration, you might be able to get two done within the first week, but you do need to make sure that you're keeping some level of quality control on them. Sketchbook pieces can usually be squeezed into whenever you have free time, or even great ways to get the creative juices flowing as a warm-up if you're having trouble getting into the creative mood. Depending on your medium, your landscape pictures can generally be put to the latter three weeks, but don't procrastinate on them, especially if you're working in a medium that has to dry before you can take a picture of it. That's another thing too, procrastination. I know it might seem easy just to push this whole thing aside, but if you're planning to go to college for art, then what's the point of trying if you're not going to make art? So, do you have any tips on developing the best art portfolio? Drop them in the comments below. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of more episodes of Art Block. Also be sure to check me out on Twitter and DeviantArt where I post art outside of the show. Today's artist shoutout goes to Dextrous Zombie, a fiber artist who I was lucky enough to be able to get a cute little spirit tail for a very reasonable price. I would highly recommend checking out their work, it's a quality of work that I can definitely vouch for. That's all for today's episode of Art Block, I'm Spirit and I will see you next time.